Welcome back to the 2% Podcast. I'm your host, Keon Blue Ventures. We got Ro Coleman, Harrison Ray. Today we got another special guest. We got professional baseball player, currently yes, the Seattle sir. Mariners. Mm-hmm. He was back in high school, the Gatorade Player of the Year. You know, first round draft pick. Uh huh. Got that bag. Okay. <laughs> Come on <All> now. Right. <laughs> Justin Sheffield, everybody. Here yes, we go. sir. My God, what's yes, good? Yes, sir. Chilling, boy. Chilling, chilling. Everything good? Yes, sir. All right, man. Let's get right into it, man. So talk to us about, you know, 2%. You know, we're talking about student athletes, you know, going from high school, going to college, and being part of that small minority of playing at that level and what it takes to play at that level. You took a different route, you know, so talk to us about your recruiting process, you know, the decision, you know, to choose and you know, what kind of work that you were putting in, you know, that separated you from everybody else. Yeah. Uh, so, like, coming through high school, I'm going to say, like, my freshman year of high school, that's when I really started knowing that, like, all right, I could I could go somewhere for baseball. Like, I could really do something with this. Um, and then I was a huge fan of David Price. So yeah. I knew that I wanted to go to Vandy, like, from mm-hmm. the jump. I didn't even want to talk to any other school. Yeah. Like, you know, I went Facts. I went to all the I went to all the recruits and all that stuff, but I only went on one official recruit and that was the Vandy. And uh I just knew that that was the place I wanted to be. Yeah. Uh going through high school, um, you know, I got an older brother, Jordan, who is a year older than me. And growing up, he was always the coldest, like mm-hmm. in the family, especially in my eyes. Yeah, you know, we, sure. I'd, I'd walk off the field mm-hmm. and you know, you'd have people in the stands come up, dap him up like a game and stuff. Yeah. And then I, I would see that. And you could call it je- jealousy a uh, little bit, but uh, that kind of- syndrome. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. Um, especially us being so close. Um, so like that, that really uh, kind of motivated me because, you know, I looked up to Jordan, um, mm-hmm. I always did. And I wanted to do everything he wanted to do, that everything that he was doing. So uh, that gave me a different drive. and. Um, once I got in high school and started getting recognition and things like that, I started putting it together, working out in the in the weight room. Um, you know, I'm, I was doing stuff that a lot of kids probably wasn't doing at that age. I was, yeah. you know, waking up, going to the gym at five five thirty, six o'clock in the morning. On your before, own? Before school with uh, my high school coach. I got to give him props, uh, uh, Brad White. He would wake up with me, go work out, and uh, Brian Morris, who's he got drafted from Tullahoma. Um, he was in the big leagues at the time. He would come back and train in the off season. So I'd go, go in, work out with them before high school, um, and then shower up, go to go to school, and then have baseball practice afterwards. But that was just, uh, I feel like that was one of those those moments because once I started doing that, my velocity went up. Um, I could tell that I was just a different type of player after yeah. that was going on, but. Uh, but yeah, definitely the motivation from, you know, having an older brother who was who was an athlete at all three sports, and um, you know, me just wanting to, you know, kind of get out of his shadow and, and kind of you know be my own person. But uh, yeah, 100%. that's good. And I guess I heard a story. Let me know if it's true or not. Um, that you and your brother, like y'all couldn't do certain activities with friends unless y'all took care of like y'all baseball stuff first. Oh yeah. Like y'all had to get y'all band working, y'all had to throw, y'all had to do, Oh yeah. Uh, y'all wasn't gonna hang out. Nah, y'all did nah, that. uh-uh, uh-uh. Yeah, you know, my pops, uh, he was there from day one as far as baseball goes. Like he knew, I feel like when he, he, he knew when we were born that we was gonna be baseball players. Mm-hmm. Um, it was like, you know, concerts going on. Uh, you know, I remember Drake and Lil Wayne had a concert and we had a uh, a scrimmage, not even a game. It was a pre pre season scrimmage, uh-huh. and man, it's like thirty degrees outside. You know, freezing. Don't nobody even want to be out there. Um, and my boy had these tickets for a minute, so uh, Jordan was asking pops, like, "Yo, we got this concert that we're trying to go to. Like, all of our boys is going to, all our friends is going to." Man, he shut that thing down so quick. <laughs> <laughs> he shut it down so quick. Uh, but there's stuff like that, man. Like, even on the weekends, you know, there'd be parties and, and whatnot, hangouts, and, you know, we'd be under the lights at the at the field, um, you know, taking mm. swings or, you know, getting right. Um, so my dad knew what he was doing, you know, because, yeah. you know, as a kid growing up, especially in a small town, 
you don't want to do nothing but chill with your boys. You yeah, know, that's, 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 that's all. That's it. <laughs> Literally, that's it. Um, but he knew that there was there was something greater than to, you know, be hanging out on the weekends and things like that. That had to be frustrating at the time, though. Oh yeah, <laughs> I, know, oh, I know y'all was mad as hell. Man, man, I can't tell you how many fights and, and stuff in the house have been broken growing <laughs> up. But man, it's you know that, that tough love. Yeah, you know. Got gotcha. you. Kind of talk about being from a small town, but me, I was just out there with y'all a month ago. We did a camp, and I didn't know y'all had that many guys that were big leaguers. Yeah. When we were coming up, social media was just starting to get a little bit of buzz, but it's not as big as it is now. How were you able to get on the circuit being from a small town, whether it be going to camps, playing with travel teams? Right. Scout, how, how, how did that process go for you? Yeah, I feel like uh, for me and Jordan, it was a little different. Um, you know, Jordan was throwing 90 miles an hour and his freshman year in high school. So <laughs> that itself was like, Jeez. you know, you ain't really heard, heard of, you know, nowadays yeah, yeah. dudes yeah, doing yeah, that yeah, yeah. left yeah. and right. But, but still, back but in the still, day though, yeah. like that was, That's unheard that of. was almost unheard of, yeah. Uh, but still, I feel like the, the the one event that probably started everything was uh, first time I met you. Breakthrough. Uh, breakthrough series. It's crazy. Yeah. And I actually, uh, right before I came, uh, Rajah Davis, text me I don't know didn't even yeah you know probably I don't even know if I've ever met dude but he texted me and said that he was a coach out there and he ran into some people that uh that knew that we played out there and mm -hmm. just asked how we thought the event was and things like that but you know that was the biggest probably biggest jump for me getting put on the map um yeah. was out there that break breakthrough series um but then other than that you know my, my dad was big on he hates travel ball he, he he can't stand travel ball. Um, as far as you know, kids not even playing high school and then going places and you know paying thousands of dollars to do these showcases and things like that. You know you gotta do what you gotta do, especially nowadays. That's that's kind of how the the, yes. the the game has revolved into. Yeah. But um, you know we would always just play high school ball. We would do legion ball with our high school with our uh, high school coach or high school team um but then here and there we'd go to certain you know he would pick certain events mm -hmm. um showcases that we would you know pop in and do a showcase here and there and then kind of just come back and do things like that so what i'm hearing is and this is back in tw before 2014 whatever so yeah. what i'm really taking now with even with more social media all you gotta do is work hard. That's it. Work hard and when you go to certain events before, you don't have to be at every single event. You don't have to play on the best travel teams, any of that, especially nowadays with social media. Yep. You just gotta work hard yep. at the end of the day. Right person gotta see the one video and it could be over with. And that's a and going to so many events could hurt you too. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Overexposure. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Talk about that enough. Speak mm -hmm. on that. Nah, that's real. <laughs> no, that's yeah. that's definitely a big thing. Um I guess for you, since you took, you definitely took a, a different route. Um, do you think now with like NIL and college baseball and, and all these different things going on in college now, do you think that would have changed your decisions any when it came to whether you wanted to go play professionally right out of high school or going to play college baseball? Because now, okay, there is kind of like a, you can get paid a little bit in college now. So would that have maybe change your thoughts or the way you viewed college at the time? That's a good, boy, I ain't thought of that one. <laughs> I ain't thought of that one. Uh, dude, maybe so, maybe so, because honestly, there's times where I'm, I'll am i sit back and I'm like, dang, like, what if I went to school? Yeah. Like, mm. you know, what, what would have been different? Um, Top five. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. coming out of high school, man, a lot of dudes don't understand, like, how tough it really is. You really gotta be self-motivated. Mm, you really gotta, gotta, you know, there's so many dudes, at, and you're at a young age, so there's so many dudes trying to put their hands on you, mm -hmm. trying to adjust things, and trying to make you, you know, put, put their, uh, put their, their touch on you, you, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, that might've changed because, you know, I really did, I loved, like I said, I love Andy. That was like, that was the place I was gonna go, like that, mm -hmm. from from the college standpoint. Ever, ever since they started recruiting, so uh, I don't know, man. Like like I said, that might have changed uh, things in in that way. But 
back when I was getting drafted, man, coming from the family I come from, uh, you know, we got everything we needed growing up. Yeah. But it wasn't nothing, you know, crazy. Yeah. Um, so to see, you know, that type of uh, opportunity come to me, that was just hard for me to turn down at the mm-hmm. time. No, I think I think you definitely brought up a good point talking about just being in pro ball at such a young age um, and understanding that it is it is tough because you do have so many people that are trying to get their hands on you. And I, I know I've talked to Ro about it and I've talked to a couple other people and I you, the guys in pro ball that you see succeed are the guys that kind of like they listen, but they don't listen. Like, yeah, yeah you, you you tell them, oh, but they, and like in their mind, they know not like, right. I'm gonna do me, I know what I'm doing. And that's kind of, and so I think that's definitely a tough part about pro ball. But I mean, I guess break it down a little bit from, cause you, you have a crazy pro ball experience. Like yeah. you've from traded to being with some of the biggest named organizations in baseball. Like how have you handled that at, again, right out of high school at such a young age I'm I can't imagine I know even getting traded that's something in itself so yeah how's that been for you uh it's been a boy it's been a ride honestly but I just feel like for me personally um just the way I went about it like you said it was like almost like you you can't you almost can't be coachable but you can't let them know that you aren't coachable yeah. if that makes sense yeah yeah um, you got to take certain things, you know, because there, there were certain coaches and the, the, the coaches that I connected with growing up through the system, uh, the pitching coaches, um, it was more so emotion. It was more so yeah. you got that dog in you. It was, you know, fire me up. It yeah. wasn't, all right, let's work on this. Let's do this with your hand. You know, this is how we gonna, you know, that, that stuff's good. But like, as for me as a player, like that's the last thing I want to think about. I'm trying to go out here and just blow it by somebody. <laughs> yeah. Hit it. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Right. Here it go. Hit it. Um, so like, that's how I just had, I, I, I got around good coaches for real. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was blessed, you know, because some dudes go through the system. You don't know what you're going to get. And, uh, yeah. and the toughest thing I always think about for guys, especially young dudes coming out of high school, pitchers, even even uh, position players is you get a you got a new coach every year. Mm-hmm. Every year you're gonna have a different coach, and you don't. He may not be talking about the same thing this, this coach what, talking about. Yep. You know, versus that's another thing that going back to what college is. You you gonna have the same dudes that you work with for at least three years, mm-hmm. and you are gonna have some type of foundation and yeah. and, and uh, mental ground of of kind of what you need to work on and where you need to be at versus. Right you know, all these different coaches getting thrown at your way. Yeah. So that's why it's come up. You got to be kind of self-motivated. But, um, you know, growing, like, the trades and stuff, like. And I guess, like, I yeah, did. really break it down. Like, what what was your situation? What did you, who who drafted you? Where did you end up? Where are you now? Like, what happened? Like, what yeah. what is, what all went down for you? Yeah, so I got drafted by Cleveland um out of high school and then I was with them from 2014 to 2016. Uh my first year in rookie ball, I thought it was terrible. Mm-hmm. Because of my I'm looking at ERA, you know, I'm coming out yeah. of high school and mm-hmm. the only thing I know is ERA really. Yeah. I don't know all the other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but uh I guess I had a ton of strikeouts so the next year they they thought I was ready to go to um low A. So I went to low A, had a really good year at low A. Then uh, went to high A the next year in Lynchburg, Virginia. Uh-huh. Had a really good year. Um, my VLO was starting to rise. Um, and then right at the deadline, the day before deadline, which I had no clue had how this stuff yeah, even worked it's at crazy. all. It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I'm, I'm in, the, in the season, and I'm in uh, playing the Whitecaps. Uh, I want to say West Michigan. Mm-hmm. West Michigan, West Detroit. Michigan. Yep. yep, yep. I'm in West what Michigan. What team is that? Detroit. Detroit. Okay. Yeah. And uh, – I'm supposed to start that day. Yeah. And then they called me and said, hey, you, you're not going to start today. I'm like, what? Yep. So then I, I go back. To, it's early in the morning. So then I'm laying back down in bed just chilling. And I don't know what's going on, really. Yeah. And then uh, that's when Carter Hawkins uh, called me. Gotcha. Which he went to Vandy, actually. Yeah. Um, he called me and told me that I had been traded to the Yankees uh, with Clint Frazier and J.P. Fireeyes and, and Ben Heller for Andrew Miller. Gotcha. And uh, that's when, you know, Cleveland was taking their little playoff run yeah. and they needed an extra lefty arm in the bullpen. So then, 
you know, that was the toughest one for me getting traded that year because I got drafted by Cleveland and mm-hmm. I was with them for two and a half years. And most of the dudes on my team then I had came up with yeah. those past two and a half boys. years. That was my yeah. boy. You know, that was all I knew, really. And uh, that was the toughest goodbye, you know, trying to uh, tell my teammates and stuff. And then I packed my stuff up, drove down to Tampa. They gave me, what, two or three days. And I met the team down there and gotcha. uh, played in Tampa. And then... Uh, Fast forward, played with the Yankees uh, from 16 to um, 18. Okay. Made my debut with them in 18. Gotcha. Um, and that was when I really knew that I like, all right, like I'm trying to come in, I'm trying to not kick the door down. Like, yeah. like I was playing really well. Uh, I was moving up the, la- the ladder quick, moving up fast. Um, and it was the Yankees, man. It was something about those pinstripes, you know, made you feel a certain type of way. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then they called me that off season after 2018, and I made that made my debut. Then, then not a month or two later, they called me and AE hey, traded to the to the Seattle Mariners for uh, James Paxton, um, and I went over there with Dom Thompson and uh, Eric Swanson. Yeah, and that one was almost like a not like a I'm gonna say probably. It, I felt at the time kind of like a slap in the face. Got you. Almost like, because I thought I was going to be a Yankee for life. You yeah. know, I've been balling out with these dudes for two and a half and years. You put the work in, you thought. Put the work in. You know, I, I made made my name up at the top of the list with all the mm-hmm. prospects and all that stuff, whatever. And then made my debut and then just like that, see ya. Gotcha. So, um, I think the first trade helped me handle, uh, handle it, yeah, uh, way, way easier than, than that second one. Got gotcha. you. Yes. Even I I know, like, we went through it this year just watching, like, the whole thing go down, and we had a couple big trades, like, right at the trade deadline. And, like, you really have no idea. Like, everybody's just sitting in the locker room, and it's just, like, you kind of see stuff on social media, but, like, you're not 100 Like, is it you just see, oh, so-and-so, you see the big name, so-and-so got traded to the Blue Jays. Mm -hmm. But then it's like, all right, wait, so who's going from the Blue Jays to so-and-so? And it's like... Everybody start. Oh, it's it's so and so. It's so and so. And the next thing you know, you see you here, but the manager come in. So and so, come here. And you're like, ah, shit. And yeah. it's just like, yes, yeah, I can't imagine. It's crazy. It crazy. is crazy. But I guess for me, breakdown. So you were with the Yankees, and you made your debut in '18. So CC was still there, right? Yep. How was that? Breakdown, like. Getting that call, dog. Oh, so we got like, we, we rewind. We got we back call, like, to like, get that call, it's dog. Like the Yankees, dude. From just how you came up, your brother, your your father, your mom, your grandparents, your little brother. Like talk about what that means. Yeah. And then not even just being a major league, but like a the Yankees, a, a Yankee come up as a Yankee, but as a black pitcher too. Right. From right. a small town. Yeah. Like talk about that. Yeah. Uh. You know, when I got drafted, I didn't know what I was gonna get, what I was getting myself into, at all. Like I, I didn't know where my talent stood versus all these other dudes from Dominican, Venezuela. Yeah. You know, like you have no clue. Then once I got to the Yankees and started making a little name for myself or whatnot, um, you know, it was kind of like I knew it was coming, but I still didn't really know. Um, you know, it was like I said, 2018 end of the year and in my head I'm like dude why ain't I getting a call why ain't I getting a call but this is me like me thinking back now like I don't even know why I was even acting like that you know what I'm saying <laughs> like just play just play the game yeah. Yeah. but it's easy to say now uh, a couple years later um, but like I just wanted to get up there get up there get up there um, then they put me in the bullpen and then uh, after the game we were in the playoffs in AAA and uh, Bobby Mitchell, the manager, um, we had just lost. Everybody's kind of just packing their stuff, dapping each other up, you know, it's the end of the year. So then he calls me in the office. Um, you know, I, at this time, I really don't, it didn't, it didn't really register because we just lost. So I'm just thinking, he's, you know, telling yeah. me, you know, it was great, great year, whatnot, whatever. Uh, see you next year. So then he says, uh, hey, man, uh, 
you're getting a call up, you're going, you're going to the big leagues. And I just broke down crying. Yeah. You know, it was like all the emotions, all the hard work, the sacrifice, the yeah. not going out in, in, in on weekends, things yeah. like that, you know what I'm saying? So like, it just really, like that, that just is a feeling that I couldn't even explain. Um, and then I walked out the room and, you know, we had just lost, we, we could have went to the AAA championship but the whole team was standing at the door, and as soon as I walked out, they went crazy. Yeah. They were going wild. Man. Yeah, it was it was it was unbelievable, man. And uh, the hardest the hardest part was calling my family because mm. you know what I'm saying. Like they knew it was possible, but yeah. it, 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 I still really didn't know it was possible till it really happened. Yeah. Um, and like that was just a surreal moment, just talking to my folks. My grandparents, you know, they they live next door to us, so like they had a huge role in in this in my story, Jordan's story, growing up. So, uh, how was that call? Like, what, like, what was said on that call? <laughs> A lot of that, a lot of crying, <laughs> a lot of crying. Yeah, I think my mom screaming. Oh, she was yeah, her, she was screaming. Yeah. My That's pops was excited. Uh, did he the big T try cry. I don't know if he, he, you know, Big T don't really he like cried. show he emotions. Said, he, he probably went in the car. Yeah, he probably he went in the car. Cry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he probably had, yeah, he had me on a Bluetooth speaker in the car or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, nah, that was, you know, and it, the biggest thing for me still is is uh, when I seen the emotion from Jordan. Facts. Mm. Like that, that and really, it hit man. Yeah. It hit because different. that's my, like that's my, that's my dude. Yeah, like that yeah. is, that's like mm -hmm. I said, growing up, I wanted to be, yeah, I wanted to be him. I wanted yeah. to be doing what he was doing. Uh, you know, still to this day, I still look up to dude. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He could tell me, let's go do something. All right, let's go. Yeah, you know. So that, that brother, yeah. brother relationship is different, man. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it hit different. Yeah, for sure. Oh yeah. You know, it's kind of the same with me and my brother in terms of. He can do no wrong, you know. Like, yeah. are you doing this? Oh, it's okay. If he's doing it, it's okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna do it. Exactly. You know, it, it's like that. Yeah. You know, so uh, that's that's love right there. Yeah. Talk to us about because I was tuned in. I, I I was tuned in. I, I saw the, the tweet. I'm like, say no more. I'm like, don't don't bother me. I think we probably watching it in the dorm or <laughs> something. I'm like, man, <laughs> man, man, man put him in the game, man. Put him in the game. <laughs> you know, and then. You see the, the pitching change, and then I'm like, nah, nah. And like, see so you open the gate, and then I just went crazy. So like, talk, talk to us about that that experience. You know, yeah. go down to the bullpen. You start in the bullpen, like paint the whole picture. Yeah. So they had me go in the bullpen in AAA. Um, like two, I had two outings down there before I went up. Um. So like, I kind of, I kind of knew I was gonna come out the pen. But I get to New York, get settled in, and whatnot. They got me in Manhattan. Jeez. First thing first, bro, trying to trying to get away around on that subway. Oh, uh, I don't know how they do it. Bro. I didn't got lost too many times. <laughs> no, I don't know how they do it. Yeah. Different. So I'm taking a subway to the to yeah. the to the to the park. They they told me that's the easiest way. You take a taxi, you're gonna be late every every day. So I'm like, all right, bet. I take a subway train, get to the field. I don't pitch the first game. I don't pitch the second game. And then on that Wednesday, I'm sitting in the I'm sitting in the bullpen, um, just chilling. And then probably about the eighth inning, seventh, eighth inning, uh, they tell me to get up, but I'm just gonna throw a bullpen um, mm. cause I ain't I ain't pitched in a minute. So they want me to keep my arm fresh. So I'm sitting here throwing my bullpen, dotting up, just like, <laughs> man, like if I go in, yeah, man, if, they, yeah, if they put me <laughs> in, man, it's over, it's over. <laughs> it's over. Like I feel nice, you know. Uh, so then they had Tommy Canley uh, warming up right beside me. Canley's supposed to go in the ninth um, to to close the game. Granted, we was up like ten to like ten three. It was like some, you know, it was high score, but. Uh, so Kaylee, I, I, I'm halfway done with my bullpen. Kaylee just now like taking his his uh his arm sleeve off, and I'm like, dang, that must be his routine or something because it's already two out. <laughs> yeah, well, like, what's, yeah, you might need to pick on? it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, so then um, they call back down and uh, Mike Harkey, 
he was the uh, bullpen coach. All I heard, uh, all I heard him say was, uh, "Yeah, um, I don't know what the hell Canley doing. He he take it forever, but uh, you know, Chef was throwing a bullpen. He, you know, he he's hot." Um, mm. And then he talked, talked, and then he just looked up at me. He's like, "Chef." You want to pitch today? Ooh. <laughs> like, that's me. That's to me. Yeah, come on. He's like, you're in. Ooh. Boy, that next ball I threw. <laughs> 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 hey, I'm telling you, halfway up the backstop, man. Uh, you Boy, know, it just caught, it. caught me by surprise, you know. But uh, yeah, man, the, the gates opened up. Damn. Mm. And when I seen them lights, boy, and just, just like it was just I blacked out really. Yeah. Only thing I was thinking was like don't trip or you know, be yeah. smooth running into the <laughs> mat. You know, like don't don't, don't get out here and do nothing stupid, you know. So I I made my way to the mound and uh I get up there and uh sure enough, first first dude roll over um tweener in between first and mm. in the in the mound, kinda yeah. like a swinging bunt. So I'm running over there fast as hell. So my legs start moving quicker than I could even, you know, yeah. my hands would move. So then I get down there and I feel it. Boy, I start bobbling the ball. Dude, safe. First play of the game. Uh, anyway, I forgot what happened. Base hit, got an out. Um, ended up being bases loaded. Uh, one out, Mookie comes up. <laughs> Mookie comes ah. up. And at this time, dude, I'm already just, I'm, I think I'm out there balking every time. Every time I'm, I'm like, dude, I'm sh I'm literally moving on every pitch. I ain't, I can't believe they ain't calling it. Yeah. Mookie gets up. I get to a two two count. Yeah, two two. No, two two one count. Um. Danger. Yeah, two one count. I throw him a heater, Ooh. and I yank mm. it. This dude. <laughs> I'm talking this ball probably still moving, bro. <laughs> Gone. I'm thinking, no way. Grand slam, first debut, like, like they they finna send me home. I'm like, it's over with. Luckily, the ball goes about that far foul. And I'm like, thank God. And I'm thank, thank God. Thank God. So now the count. The count was 3-2. I forgot what count it was. He hit the uh it was 3-1 when he hit the, yeah, 3-1 when he hit the, the foul ball homer. And then 3-2 count, um, I throw another fastball, and he ends up rolling over to shortstop, ground ball, mm. double play. Got out of it, no runs. <laughs> yeah, right boy, here. yeah, Woo. yeah. God was looking out for me that day. But, um, yeah, that was, uh, dude, one of the greatest times, greatest moments in, in my entire life was was that moment right there. No, nah, that's real, man. Um, you speak about your brother, uh, Jordan, and people don't know it's, it's history. Like you, you and him are in a category where only select few guys who have been brothers going the first round. And you talk about black brothers going the first round. I think it's you, the Uptons, and I'm mistaken, it's somebody else. I, I I can't remember at the time. But talk about when when he got caught up. What that meant to you? Yeah, that was a. Uh, I was probably I was I know for a fact I was way more excited. Um, for him versus when I got called up, because Jordan, man, it, it, he uh, that dude, that dude, uh, it took him a minute, like to to get adjusted to the to the pro ball. Yeah. Um, you know, it's hard going from Vandy and then you go play in yep. rookie, rookie ball, or, you know, <laughs> in a stadium, but different. No, hardly any fans. It's freezing out there, and it's just it ain't you know. You coming from from that to the to, from from this to that. That's an uh, adjustment right there. Oh yeah, yeah. So it took it took Jordan a minute, and just seeing what he had to go through, um, on and off the field, uh, you know, for him to 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 beat Rule Five uh, by the by the Rockies, that that in itself was like I remember I was in the locker room and I was like. Uh, two, I can't even believe like dude finna be a big leader like that's dude finna be a big leader. That's crazy. And then he went out to spring training and, and did his thing. Yeah, went out there and showed out. Had a great season that year. And just being able to watch him, actually being able to, he came to us. Uh, the Rockies came to Seattle. Being able to meet at home plate, mm. and we Damn. both in the big leagues. Like 
couldn't even make it up. You know what I'm saying? Like, just it was it was almost like a movie. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when 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 Jordan got called up, man, that was incredible feeling. Um, just because knowing what he had to go through, um, and and the adversity he had to go through, that dude went through a lot. But um, to see him fulfill his dream, which everybody knew that he had the talent, everybody knew that he was going to be in the big leagues. I think mm-hmm. it just he just had to know himself, for and, sure. And that's what you know pushed him to go have the year that he did when he was up there. For sure. Man, let's talk about. Let's talk about the plane rides, man. Cause I, I, I know, I know I, I, that's where it go down, you yeah, know, on, yeah. on the plane. You know, for for everybody who's not in the bigs, you know, in college you, you go out, it's a dorm room, you know, but like professional ball on the highest level, it's, it's about the plane. Oh know? yeah. So like, <laughs> you got some stories, or just you know, just hip 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 us on on some things that don't that don't that happen. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I got a, I got a story. I got a story. Plane ride is crazy. First off, like best. Yeah. I mean, you win a game. You you win a, you win a series, and you hop on that plane. You go back home. Oh man, it's, yeah. I know our plane is lit. Uh, you know, all the people we sit in the very front of the plane. In the middle, you got the rest of the players. Most of, mostly like car players, and you know, dudes that'll just be chilling and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Then the next row section, you got. Uh, that's where all the coaches and stuff sit. So the front of the plane is the loudest part of the plane, on our plane. And we always carry like this big boom box and the whole plane ride, JP or, you know, myself or somebody uh, shared at the time would be on the on the, yeah. on the speaker box. Shaking. <laughs> oh, Shaking. bro, I'm talking crazy. But uh, I'll tell you about my first flight um, to um, Tampa. This is when I was with the Yankees. I got done pitching that day, um, and we had to get on a flight that night. So I'm about to get on a plane, and you said CC CC was on the team, and he was like, you know, the head the head dude, you know, he ran it. <laughs> so <clears throat> I get on the plane, me and uh, me and my boy, we uh, we were chilling, whatnot, um, you know, about to get chill and get ready to just go to sleep. Really, so uh, CC and everybody, they're up in the middle section. They're playing. They got the car tables out. So all I hear is hundred dollar high hand, hundred dollar high hand. So I ain't think nothing of it. I'm in the back with the with the trainers and the the media, social yeah. all, all the media staff. <laughs> everybody doing it just back there. Me and Jonathan Weisiger. So we sitting there Buddy chilling. Cold. Oh, Buddy, Buddy dude, cold. nasty, nasty. Dude probably got the most electric stuff. In the in the show, Uh, so I had ordered a Corona. Jonathan got a Corona, so I was like, "All right, whatever. I'm gonna get a Corona." I got a Corona. So then Judge comes to the back, hundred dollar high hand, hundred dollar hand, shelf bonus, baby. You first rounder, get your ass up here. (laughs) (laughs) All right, whatever, you know. So you ain't gonna say no today. (laughs) Nah, uh -uh. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. Let's see what this about. So, um. I'm going through my bag. I'm going through my bag. I found my uh, my meal money. They used to give it to us in packages, um, and it, it was all twenties. So then I go up there, CC sitting at the table like the Godfather. Man, everybody just around this man. He's just chilling, man. <laughs> and I'm talking. They got chips and money all on the That's table. Real. Yeah, it was sick. Uh, so I go up there and they all waiting on me. They're like, "Come on." So then I throw the I throw the money out there. Man, as soon as CCC knows twenty dollar bills, he's like, "Man, what the fuck is that? What is that? dude? What is that? We don't play with twenties. We play with hundreds. What you doing? Like going crazy in front of everybody, dude? I, I locked up. I'm like, <laughs> I'm thinking, what's the difference? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's still high. dude, yeah. money, money. You know, count it. But now nah, they they was playing with with, with bills. I see notes. Yes, yes, and. I had no clue, and he go crazy on me. So everybody's like, after he said something, everybody's like, "Yeah, chef, what you thinking? Like, what you doing?" So at this point, I'm sweating, man. I'm like, I'm I take my money. I'm like, "All right, hold on, let me go, let me go find a hundred. So I go back there. I look at my bag, trying to find a hundred. Well, Russian ne- ne- dude, Russian. <laughs> they all still yelling, like, "Come on, we waiting, we waiting." Next thing I know, 
I knock over the damn Coronas that's sitting right here in the middle of the thing. Knock over the Coronas all over. And now I got the training staff, everybody behind me like, Oh, shit. <laughs> the whole plane going in on me, bro. Yeah, I remember I wiped up the Corona. I put my headphones in, dude. I went to sleep, man. I, I called it a day. Yeah. Nah, that's funny as hell. Oh, yeah, Damn. Yeah, the flights is fun, though. But yeah, CC, what was, so, like, you was talking about CC. What does CC mean to you? Because you were there for a little bit with him. Yeah. How was that? I mean, living legend. Dude. Like, man, one of a kind. Yeah, yeah. Dude's the greatest person I've ever met, played with, all that. Um, like he legit took me under his wing. Didn't even have to. Um, you know, he would he he reached out to me first. Um, mm. You know, let him know who he was, and mm -hmm. and obviously I knew who he was. Yeah. Um, but he said if I if he if I ever need anything from him, let him know. And from that moment on, me and him we was tight. Uh, you know, spring training. He took me to Miami, mm. Pete, private private plane. Went to Miami. Uh, we had one one off day. Uh, we played a we had a day game Sunday, and then the off day was Monday. We flew out Sunday night, and we was gonna go on a fishing trip out there. So then it was me, him, and uh, John Carlos Stanton, and mm. then they had a couple of day boys. Whole time we pulling up to the airport, I'm I'm like, dude, I ain't got a I ain't got a flight. I ain't like, what do I, you know what I'm saying? Like, do I need to buy my flight? And he was, didn't say nothing, just ignore me. <laughs> so we pulled in the back, PJ sitting there. I'm like, dude, wow. Okay. Go to Miami, yeah. yeah. Go to Miami. He got my own room. Uh, you know, we yeah. went to uh, live. Um, like, live. Yeah, got to meet Nipsey. Like that was, Damn. Yeah. Damn. it was Damn. it was his uh, Damn. album release party actually. Oh, That's good night. So yeah, Damn. got to meet Nipsey, Deshaun Jackson. Um, Devin Booker must have dudes, but That's so we did that, and then he took me to the Miami Heat game, and uh, flew back the next the next day. And then, yeah, That's a hell of a weekend, brother. Man. Yeah, no, he, weekend. He, uh, he, Big uh, league life, man. But not only that, dude, like he would just invite me over to to his crib, and you know have people cook, and we just sit there and chop it up about baseball or just watch. He loves basketball, so we watch hoops. Yeah, just kick it. Yeah, just like. Like real normal cat. Nah, CC his money was long. Yeah, That's man. <laughs> CC a real one for yeah. sure. I got the opportunity to coach his son with my pops um a few years ago, and like seeing his son now at Georgia Tech, just meeting CC and like me and him had a conversation. Exact same thing, like man, just a real cat dog. Just real, real cat. Yeah. He, don't, he don't care about nothing. That he, he he a real one for sure. Yeah, yeah. He's in, in. If you ask anybody that's ever played with him, like in the locker room, they say he's the best. Best teammate they've ever had. Yeah, um, and that's that's legit. That dude, you know, he ain't had to do all that. No, no, yeah. no. Mm -hmm. He ain't had to do none of that. He could have. He could have big lead you. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. And you be like, all right, bet, yeah. cool. I get it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. But like him doing that, that's like that. Like if I, you know, in the future, I would never treat a rookie or somebody mm -hmm. in a in a in a different different yeah. way you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying i would definitely i'd be the type of player to be like like come on like let's mm -hmm. do whatever but not not be the dude because there's a lot of dudes out there that's you know they got that big league status and then yeah. they got rookies come in especially young prospect dudes that mm -hmm. and they got to go through hell i mean yeah. it's like that in college too but you know to a certain extent you got to be there for that dude because Shit, that dude gonna have he, he you gonna need him. Fast. You gonna need that player. Mm -hmm. Have you ever um fanned out over somebody, a, a, a player that you saw? It's like, man, I can't believe this such and such. Obviously, probably CC is probably yeah, one. Yeah, CC one, was one. The biggest one for me though, still to this day, is Price. Wow. Yeah. Still to this day. Yeah, you know, him, but you know. Him. And I yeah, I met him plenty of times. I've, I've seen I've him been on the other side. Him. Yeah, but just like. Something about that dude, man. He he's just he's crazy. He started it all though. Yeah, that's, exactly. that's what it is. Exactly. Like, especially us being from this area and watching him at Vandy, yeah. like eleven years old. He two thousand seven. You know, it was his junior year. Mm -hmm. And then for me personally, that was like the first black guy in the SEC that I watched. Yeah, and who was doing it on that level mm -hmm. and the emotion that he pitched with. And like how gangster he was on the mound, it's like 
Hell yeah. yeah. And so even, I remember one, probably my freshman, sophomore year, I remember him coming into the locker room. <laughs> all casual. Like, just casual. Right. I'm like, Cause, <laughs> cause. you know, I try to play it cool. Yeah. You know what I'm this is exclusive. Cuz came in, took a dump <laughs> in the bathroom and walked out just like, like no, no one's going on. But I'm like, but back to it, I'm just like, man, like he was like the dude for us, you know? Mm-hmm. And so just like still to this day, like if I see him, like, like that's, that's, that's him. Yeah, that's him. That, that's him. That's that guy. Yeah. For real. 100%. No, man, that, yeah. that's, that's real for sure. Um, no, a lot of people want to know like, what what does it take to be a big leaguer? Like from a training perspective now that you are in the big leagues and like, how do you stay there? Because everybody, can get to the show, but it's yeah. about staying in the yeah. show, and you have been able to do it. Yeah, talk to that. Yeah. yeah, it's hard to stay in the show, man. It's it's. Uh, I think the the biggest thing that I've taken away from my, the things that I've went through was just it goes back to knowing yourself, um, because you can you can do certain things a different way, and you can go down a, a wrong path easily, especially in baseball. You make one tweak to your swing, you make one tweak to your arm <laughs> slot, that could, that one tweak could mess up about three, four different other things and you won't even notice it because you're out there playing the game. Yeah. Um, so you really just, I feel like knowing your body, knowing, having a plan in the off season um, and, and not, not getting away from that plan. Um, you know, I've been, I've been, I've done it before of, you know, thinking, ah, like I'm, I'm, I'm gonna work out tomorrow. Like I'm gonna, mm. I'm gonna put this off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go do this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it in tomorrow. You know, and then you, those tomorrows keep adding up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I feel like just really knowing what your plan is, um, and then having a routine. That was the biggest thing. It took me a minute to have a routine because, especially guy coming out of high school, you mm-hmm. know. Going into pro ball, all I heard was like, "You gotta watch out, for, you know, watch out for people because they yeah. they might steer you wrong. Watch yeah. out for them." So it, I had a hard time trusting people. Yeah. Um. So then that that took me into a, I had a hard time finding a routine for myself because, you know, maybe my simple routine coming out of high school, you know, you do a couple stretches, maybe a couple bands, and <laughs> I'm good, I'm, I'm straight, <laughs> yeah, like I'm go, like I'm, I'm straight, but. There, there's so much more that goes into it. So the, when I was able to just kind of open up a little bit and take a little advice from people that I trusted, um, then I was able to work in a, a routine that that worked for me. And uh, you know, there's I've heard stories of Kershaw and, and Verlander and guys like that. Some of the greats, those dudes are doing the same exact thing that they did years ago. Dog. At the same time, don't miss. Um, you know, I heard Jordan told me Kershaw on the days he pitched, don't talk to that man. Like, don't even look at him, look at him. That, um, but that's just one of his one yeah. of his. That's his mental. That's how he gets right. Um, but the hardest thing is just finding that for yourself. I feel like um, finding out what kind of player you are, and then um, don't let them try and tell you what kind of player you are because you know maybe y'all don't see eye to eye, or they don't see the way you feel like you you play the game. So, um, and I'm still learning, dog. Like, I'm, yeah. you know what I'm saying? I'm still I'm still trying to figure this thing out, like, for real. Um, but I feel like dudes that, like, even Verlander, he'll tell you the same thing, probably. Like, I'm still working. Yeah. Like, he probably doesn't think that he figured it all out, yeah. even though it's, he's, yeah, he's, he's, he's in he's, a record book yeah, and Hall of Famer. I mean, you know what I'm exactly. saying? He's on but, another level. You know, that dude's still probably working. Yeah. Um, it sounds like the biggest adjustment or just the biggest thing from what you just said is uh, people talk about like the, the mental aspect of everything, mm-hmm. you know, and so having a routine being, I think something that you might not have said, but it's in there in the message I want to say it to the people is discipline, yep. you know, so not putting it off yep. to nest oh, I'll take care of tomorrow, you know, or your routine might be an hour long, but you that day you might... I got like 40 at me. Cut it short, know, I yeah. like 30 cut it right, short, right, you feel right, me? Right. But like just that this or I eat this at this time, like take care of your body. Yeah. From a arm standpoint, leg standpoint, you know, what you put in your body, mm-hmm. you know. So I guess speak to 
I don't know, just the, the mental aspect of the game, you know, um, hitters, you know, sometimes it's not even physical stuff. Like, right. you know, it might not be physical, it's, it's, it's mental. No, you're so, right, you're right. Speak on like the, just the, the mental part. You gotta think, you gotta think, everybody that's in baseball, <laughs> they, they, they got talent. Yeah. Like there's a reason why they're there. Mm -hmm. You'll see dudes in the big leagues You'll probably see more dudes that are late rounders than you do see first rounders Facts. in the show. Facts. <laughs> Want it um, more. And that's, you know, Why? that's all, that's, I, I guarantee it goes back to the mental part of the game. Mm -hmm. You, you got to have, and maybe work at the, you know, maybe some other stuff like that, but the mental part of the game is the toughest thing to figure out about baseball. 100%. Um, because I went through times where I felt like I couldn't get a dude out because mm -hmm. I'm in my head about, yeah. I'm on the phone looking at my mechanics like, you dude, why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? Why ain't it coming out the same? Why'd he take this pitch? Um, you know, in the past they would have swung, you know, things mm -hmm. like that. And, it's, and instead yeah. it's like, it's a game, man. The, the, mm -hmm. the variables and, and the outcomes is gonna be way different all the time because it's just, it's a game. Things can happen different ways. So, you know, you might have thrown a pitch last week that got a dude to swing at, and you might have thrown the same exact pitch this week, and he ain't swing at it. Why are you gonna be like, oh, well, maybe I did something wrong here? You know, like the, it's just all mental part. It's it's like you really. That's why I'm saying you really just gotta know yourself, know what you do, and just go out there and do it. And it's just gonna it's gonna translate yeah. because the work's gonna be there. Yeah. If you work, most every guy in the big leagues that I've seen mostly are hard workers. Um, some of them may be harder workers than others, but that's just how that person is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but the mental part of it, dude, that that's ninety nine percent of ninety percent of it, I would say, um, because everybody up there can throw ninety. Everybody's been throwing a baseball, hitting a baseball since they was a little kid, and they got it to that point for a reason. Yeah. Um, but I feel like it's just that mental that mental part, guys that learn how to do that, how to how to be great at the mental part of the game. Don't let distractions get in front of them. They know what they're doing. And those are the those are the great players, I feel like. No, for sure. Kinda wanna go back a little bit. What advice would you have for that top prospect high schooler that's coming out nowadays, especially with how social media is so crazy with when it comes to making this decision, do I should I go to Pro Bowl or should I go to the college route? Yeah. Um I feel like first first and foremost, you gotta talk to your family. Um, you gotta talk to the people that's behind you um, because you know, they'll be the ones that ain't gonna steer you wrong because you'll, get, you'll hear all kinds of outside voices yeah. take this route or go this way. None of that matters. All that matters is your people, really. <clears throat> um, and that's what I based my decision off of. You know, it was nothing it was really nothing personal. Like I wanted to go to pro ball and I knew I wanted to be in the big leagues, um, but I also knew I wanted to go to college, but just talking to my folks, you know, we narrowed it down to a decision and I was happy with that decision. Um, I feel like you really just gotta look at yourself in the mirror too. Are you, are you absolutely ready to yeah. go into pro ball and you got to go in there and do damage because if you go in there and you don't put up numbers for the first couple of years, at first they might be, oh, it's just, it's new. It's yeah. a fluke, you know, it, he's new to this stuff, but you got to go in there and be self-motivated and put in that work and put up numbers to move up in the ranks and to get to the, to the show. Especially now with the draft being cut short, they cut him out of league team. You got to yep. be ready. Ready. Gotta be they ready. ain't got time to waste. No, they, want they don't. Lose now. They don't. And, yeah. let's, and let's be clear about him talking about, oh, they might give you a little grace to give you time to adjust. We're talking about top prospects. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. be, be, understand that, people yeah. who, who listening, because I've seen it myself when I yeah. was coaching with the Phillies, and it's easy to get lost in that shuffle. Yep. It's easy. And then you... And then when you start getting lost, the conversation start to cease. Mm -hmm. And now you like, you know, now, okay, now you, you start to spin 
you know, okay, what can I do there? Like, what can I do better? Sure, yeah, okay. And you know, you start that that heartbeat mm-hmm. starts to speed up, mm-hmm. and it's like, and you, I'm watching them like, ah, you know, and <laughs> yeah. it's like, and you, it's like nothing you can do, man. Right, it's like right. so, the grace and giving the time to adjust. That's that's be 100 percent honest with like people. Like, that's for the top three, four round, right. like top guys or guys that got right. a lot of money in. Right. They're going to give you that grace. Yeah. Now, if they ain't got a lot of money in you, 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 you got to come out swinging. Because even then, <laughs> your bat's still going to be limited. Yep. You know, mm-hmm. so in those two bats that you might get that day, other guys got six of bats, yep. seven of bats, but yep. you're getting two. You feel me? So. It, it, it's not it's not fair, but it is what it is. Yeah, you know, yeah. it is what it is. You gotta do what you gotta do. Exactly. You know, so But like you said, you made a good point. Uh like those top round dudes, mm-hmm. if you don't if you don't go into it humble, neither. I've mm-hmm. seen dudes go in it go into it and it's like, oh well, I'm gonna get my shot no matter what I do today. Mm-hmm. Like I'm gonna get my chance because Speak I'm, I'm a first rounder. I got, yeah. you know, such and such, whatever, whatever it is. But if you don't really go into it and and ground yourself and and know who you are and and go about every day the same day and don't tra- don't change up, don't switch up, don't be up here when you playing good, don't be down here when you playing bad, because that's how you turn into a bad teammate. Nobody wants you on nah. their team, and as soon as that gets heard in the in the in the, in the up top, it's over with. Yep. Yeah. That's yeah. you know nobody wants a, a cancer on their on their team, so yeah. I feel like. You know, dudes that if they, you know, they see this that are going into the draft, just be yourself, man. Be humble and and just be ready to work. That's it. But talk about the the balance of humble, but still confident and knowing. Oh yeah. That you okay, it's it's a fine line, you know, because yes, I'm humble, but my attitude in the space I'm operating in, was I'm on the field, has to, you know. I'm be I'm be honest, you know, you, you gotta have a certain like you gotta feel a certain way about yourself to compete and excel. Mm-hmm. Like you can't like you gotta be two different people. Like, you know, and that's something I didn't really figure out until I was to them maybe a month ago, maybe junior, senior year of college. Like I'm still still confident, you yeah. know. Like I'm going around like not confident, I'm still confident, but it's levels. Yeah. It's so it's a different type of mindset exactly. that you gotta have exactly. to really Foot on a, on a throat yeah. type of mindset, yeah. but still be humble. So yeah. I guess like speak about that, how you I manage f- it. I feel like for me personally, you know, I'm gonna be the same cat. Don't matter, you know, I could be talking to whoever over here, and then whoever over here, I'm gonna be the same dude, no matter where I'm at. Just because that's that's how I was raised. My my parents raised me that way, um, and I feel like me going through that high school exposure kind of got me ready for that, um, knowing kind of not to be way up here because things could crash quick, quick. real quick. Um, but at the end of the day, your plan going to talk. Mm-hmm. If you out there and you play with confidence and you play with a type of swagger and you know that you're feeling yourself, people going to talk. They're going to be like, this dude look nice out there. Yeah. Like, he look clean. Like, mm-hmm. He and 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 the, the hitters gonna see it too. Fair. When you run around, you, you can feel that. Yeah, you strike somebody out, you yeah. str- do a little zone strut, there. man. You get the ball back, you get on the mound, you ready to go again. Like they gonna see that in the in the box. But as a, as a position player, I've heard dudes all the time see pitchers up there, and it's like, oh, their chest is bowed in, and, and, and you, can tell. you can tell they they mm-hmm. they already defeated. Yeah. And then you so get up there and it, pop. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So. I feel like, yeah, you do got to be confident. You got to feel yourself, really. Like, you just got to, you got to feel yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the the overconfidence, that's when, you know, dudes, dudes don't, dudes don't like that. Um, especially, especially in pro ball, especially in a big league locker room. You go up in the big leagues and you, you, if you act a certain way and don't perform, oh, it's over with. Now, if you sure, now if you J Rod or somebody like that, you, yeah. you can act how you want to. Yeah. <laughs> dudes going out there and you know, then they're putting the MVP numbers this rookie year. Yeah. yeah. Um. So you just really gotta know what kind of play you is and and find your own lane and, but still, when you when you out there in the spotlights on you, you gotta, be confident and let that let it let it rock. Talk about talk more about J Rod, dog. Like, you talk about how Griffey came into the league and how he took the league by storm and like. You got a cat like that. That's a five-two guy. Yeah, 
like physical and everything. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. You yeah. know? I mean, the stuff from just us seeing it on TV, what he does on the field is crazy, but like you saw it up close and personal mm-hmm. every single day. Yeah, dude, dude's legit. Dude's the best player I've ever played with, seen play. And I play with a lot of, a lot of great players in my in my past, but that dude trumps all of them. Um, and he was nineteen, right? And or dude 20. might might be twenty, might be twenty, but he's got the the thing that people don't understand is that dude is literally so confident in himself, dog. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's it's crazy, and and he believes in himself. Like he he knows that he's he's good, that yeah. good. You know, he can go off for one one game and he gonna be the same dude. He ain't gonna be mad. He gonna put his helmet in the, in the helmet rack. He gonna put his bat right there in the bat rack. Cause he know tomorrow he finna roll out here and get three hits and yeah. it's gonna equal out. You know what I'm saying? Like that dude is, he's nice. But what guys don't, what people don't see behind the scenes is the work that he put in. I mean, that dude is a monster. Um, he's in the weight room. He's getting his stuff done. He's gonna need his nap. <laughs> that dude love a nap, pregame nap. Uh, but he knew you can tell how professionally professional he is at a young age that this dude he is endless amount of his there's no ceiling on him mm-hmm. really uh the dude is legit he he's a he's a pro i um, think it's it's big on what you said it, the belief i think that's i think everybody they talk about like confidence but i think like the part that should be talked about more is the belief because confidence like everybody you can fake confidence. You see guys mm-hmm. that, oh yeah, they, yeah, they, okay, they confident. But right. it's like, isn't it doesn't really get into effect or really like show on people until it's like that belief. Like, like you said, like he literally knows in his mind he believes. All right, you got me four times today. Tomorrow I'm, I got three hits waiting for yeah. me tomorrow. Like, yeah, ain't no if ands or buts about it. But that belief, I think that's a big thing. And then you talked about. Um, coaching wise and coaches that you adapted to the most and you've been in three systems now and analytics is a huge part now like you and I both like mm-hmm. it is kind of taken over the game and especially minor league big leagues like talk about like from the three places you I know the Mariners I face them this year all y'all want to do spin 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 spin, yep. spin. y'all 80 percent breaking balls yep. Yankees they're not as bad they they tried to spin it a little bit and I, I've never played the Indians, so I don't really know what their whole philosophy is. But I know I faced the Mariners this year, mm-hmm. and you, I'm talking about guys throwing 100. Yep, spinning. Yep. So what is, what is that like been going through the three teams and organizations, and how have you dealt with they're trying to get you to fit into their system, and how have you really dealt with all that? Yeah, so with Cleveland and the Yankees, it was – I never really – they had a philosophy set, but mm-hmm. I never really bought into it. Bought into it, did you. it. Like, I just wanted to get to the show. That Facts. was my main goal. I wanted to get to the big leagues. Um, and at that time, as fast as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't really get into that stuff until I got to the big leagues. Got you. Until I had success in the big leagues and then I failed in the big leagues. Um, because there, there's a certain, there's a next, there's a, there's a certain, there's a next level to it. There's, there's, all right, I can get dudes out. I know that I can get dudes out in the big leagues. Mm-hmm. The stuff that I'm doing is gonna get dudes out in the big leagues, but is it really the best justice that can be out there on the mound? Gotcha. So the philosophy that they bring into it, it kind of, you know. Some things I agree with, some things I don't agree with. Yeah. Um, at the end of the day, I'm gonna be the same dude that I have been since day one. Mm-hmm. But if I can take some of these little pieces, yeah. little in bits, and put them into my game, you know, maybe, maybe I'm way better than yeah. what I was, you know, prior. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like that's hard. Like going through different yeah. organizations, I can see that with like the philosophy and, and things like that, but. I feel like it goes back to like just knowing what you really want to buy into and mm-hmm. really what you don't need to buy into. Yeah. Because I, I mean, I, and you got to try stuff to, and fail to to know exactly what that is. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I've tried and, and 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 succeeded with some stuff, and I've tried yeah. and failed miserably with some stuff. So it's yeah, just it's one of those things. Yeah. It's just, you just gotta 
at the end of the day, you still working, still working, still trying to figure out what's going to be, what's the best picture that I mm-hmm. could be out there. Do you like all the analytics that are in it now? I'm not big in it. You're not big in it? I feel like I'm old school baseball, man. Gotcha. It's like... Give me, give me the rock, man. Give me the, yeah, give me the, give rock. Me the rock and let me sling this mug. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm no, saying? Fair. And that's when I'm at my best. Yeah. And it's like, I'm it goes, exactly. Yeah, compete. And it's, it goes yeah. back to before I even catch the ball from the catcher, it's like, like I know I'm finna, like I know I'm finna blow this body. Yeah. I know I'm finna be. Nice you up. Yeah, it's over. I'm feeling myself now. It's mm-hmm. over with. Yeah. I'm a big feel guy. Like, yeah. I, you know, if I feel good, it's I'm more than likely going to get them out. But if I'm up there, like, ah, oh, let me let me spin it like this. All right, two strikes. Let me land this one right there. It's like nah. that's when shit gets hung and and, well, and hit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, when, that's when stuff gets banged. But yeah. uh, speak a little bit um, about just culture um, in terms of the Mariners' culture with the the Yankees. We all know the Yankees is, have their own culture, mm-hmm. and so. You speak a little bit about that, cause I know the guys that's on that Mariners team either this year or the past two years. A lot of brothers on that team. Yeah. So like just the, the locker room, like just yeah, just compare and contrast. Yeah. And everything. Um, the Yankees, man, that was the the biggest thing I could compare the Yankees to is is probably like a they're the Vandy of college. I about mm-hmm. to say that it's uh, it's very structured, and I think that's why I was so good with them coming up because that's I need that I needed that structure at that time. I needed that somebody to keep my ass in line and yeah. somebody to, you know, this is how we run things over here. You know, we ain't going we ain't doing this. We going straight line together. Um mm-hmm. we needed, you know, and I needed that at the time. And I bought in. I mean who you know what I'm saying? Like it was greatest organization in all of sports, you know, yeah, sure. the most most recognizable probably. Yeah. Um, so like that was that was big for me, especially at that time when I was 20, I think I was 19, 20, I was 20, all the way up until 22, 23. So like during that time period, that was, that was huge for me. Um, now when I came over to the Mariners, now this was like a lot more free, I feel like. It wasn't as people on your neck and yeah. you know what I'm saying they really want you to just kind of be yourself which yeah. I respect like yeah. that's that's cool but you really got to hold yourself accountable yeah, you know sure. you really got to go in there and get your workouts in and, and, and do what you need to do because mm-hmm. ain't nobody gonna be down your back saying yeah. hey well, let's go let's go get this work you know so you just gotta be able to hold yourself accountable but the culture man the Mariners man when the, the dudes uh, back in 2019 I think we had maybe nine brothers on the team. That's unheard of. Unheard of. (laughs) And that was probably the best time I've ever had out there on the field, (laughs) in the locker room. Um, It goes down in the locker room. (laughs) bro. Like, you know, we had D Gordon. Like, that was the, you know, he was the The head. The homie. The homie, bro. Like, D, Shed, JP, uh, Tim Beckham. Um, Oh, damn, I forgot about it. Man, we had... uh, Kyle Lewis, uh, Dunn, right? Justin Dunn, um, Walker, Taiwan Walker. At one point, um, mm. he's a homie. I like Ty a lot. Uh, but yeah, because it's unheard of, man. Like yeah. you don't really coming through the coming through the ranks, man. I might have on um, every team that I played on might have been one other other black dude on the yeah. on the squad. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Um, but I think what makes me and my brother, um, I feel like we're very versatile. Yeah, for sure. My mm-hmm. mom's white, my dad's black. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, my mom's side of family's like very country, yeah. very like country. My dad, <laughs> a lot of his family, you know, is, uh, he, he came from Nashville, you know, the east side before yeah. it was, um, you know, gentrified and all that stuff. So, um, you know, we get both sides of it. So we were brought up way different. Like we didn't really know racism growing up in in the crib because mm-hmm. there was none for sure um we didn't really have to, we didn't know about racism until we got outside the crib and you know maybe something happened and i'd have to go come home and ask my parents why why did that happen yeah. like you know things like that but 
So we, I feel like we were able to get along with, you know, the, the Latin dudes, the, the white Americans, the, mm-hmm. the black folks. Like it's, it's, it's just kind of in our culture. But you do in pro ball. One thing I hate is seeing clicks. It's very clicky. It's, click, it's yeah. very clicky, man. Um, which I, I hate it, and I don't. I never will understand it. Yeah. Still to this day, but um, you know. But then you also get guys that you know. No, nah, for sure. Them, but no, nah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, I do. I think that's one thing that organizations can do a better job of building that culture. Oh around. yeah. Like you build a good culture, players are going to develop more. Oh, yeah. Versus just like it's because right now, and then I know it's different depending on the organization, but for the most majority, it's just free fall. Go ahead, try to get it done on your own. Versus like. Make it more like that college environment where mm-hmm. no, this is this is your teammate. Right. It, it could be okay. So what if he's your teammate for two days? Like try to make that the best two days. Exactly. And things like that. So I think that can actually help elevate the play and yeah. the development of players as well. But it is what it is. I feel like it's coming though. Like, yeah. I feel like it's transitioning into, especially once once we see a lot more guys like us out there on the field. Nah. Um, I feel like that's a that's a. Cause I played with with you know the guys that I was talking about where it's it's hard for them to be Fair. understood. No, nah, for um, sure. You know, especially on the coaching side. You know, you got sixty something year old white man who's been in the game for years, and then you got you know somebody let's just say like yourself. Um, but you you know you've been to Vandy, so like, but let's say you came straight from. Chicago yeah. in the pro ball and you know you might that that connection is just hard to it's just hard to be relatable like that yeah. um mm-hmm. and you see a lot of that yeah. and it's kind of like you know I respect the old school part of the game For sure. but you know it's you got to be you got to have that communication man yeah. but yeah let's talk about well just just speak on some some guys that you that you look forward to facing you know like some you the toughest guys to face or some matchups that you look like, I want I want this matchup. Like, I look forward to this matchup. Either a team or a person yeah. or lineup in general. Like yeah. speak on that. Somebody you hate facing too. All right. Uh <laughs> oh, shit, I gotta face this dude. <laughs> Honestly, I can't I'm I'm excited to face Soto now mm-hmm. that he's in San Diego. Okay. Um yeah. I think, you know, he one of the best hitters in, in, in the game right now. Um, I would love to face him. I love facing Vladdy because I feel like there's always that yeah. battle behind, b- between us, always. That man is he's ridiculous, bro. Yeah, he's I, nice. I, have, I was with him. That's the craziest. Like, I've never seen somebody like Dude's that. Dude's cold, bro. Bro, like, in the dugout with him, I'm talking about, like, he'd be, he's at the end of the dugout, but he's, he's hitting third. Lead off guy's hitting right now. He's at the end of the dugout, hey, sitting there talking, <laughs> just, just talking to everybody. Mm-hmm. Next thing, makes a hit out, whatever, walks, gets to the front, gets up there, gets on deck, gets up, bro, 117 off the wall. <laughs> Jogs a second, <laughs> comes back in, talking it. I'm like, bro, what something did I just something witness, just pure. You know, something bro? Just, like, just come he, out the he, wound. He just, just, yeah. And it's like, I don't know when it clicked for him. I don't know when he got, like, locked in, but it must have been, like, when he was on deck or when he was, like, walking oh. to the plate. But, like, I'm t- he was talking shit to all the guys at the back of the dugout with us. Mm-hmm. Walks up there, 117. I said, like it bro, ain't nothing. Like, it was nothing. <laughs> Comes back talking shit again. I said, bro. <laughs> see what his pops is, man. Bro, yeah, it's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. Well, ridiculous. Man, everything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some of those Vladdy. dudes are ridiculous. Mm, so, you said Vladdy. Vladdy. I like facing Vladdy just because yeah. of the comp- that, that, uh, that comp- competition, competition bro. Welcome to that challenge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he know it because he gets over there and swings hard as shit. <laughs> <laughs> hard as hell, everything. And yeah, he's got me before. I ain't gonna lie, but I've got him a couple times too. Yeah. Uh, somebody I would hate facing would probably be um, Bichette is tough out. He's hard to strike out. Yeah. That dude, because he changes his swing, he'll yeah. widen out and just want to take it the other way. Um, but shit's tough out. Machado, 
Mm-hmm. That's that's probably one of the ones where I can't get dude out. <laughs> like I can't, bro. Uh, but I'm up there throwing <laughs> shit. I don't even throw. <laughs> I'm just, like, just swing and miss, dog. Just, just come Please. on, man, dude. But uh, yeah, he would. He every time I've pitched against dude, it's like I got his back against the ropes, and then I'll make another great pitch. I never forget. I had him two strikes, mm-hmm. and I think I threw change up, change up away. Everything was away. So then I was like, all right, let me two seam. Let me front hip him right here. Perfect front hip job, man. I'm talking right at the belt. Came back last second. Dude, this dude pulled his hands in so Tight. far. Yeah. Dude, and took it the other way. Just <laughs> and Tight. I'm like, you got it. Are you yeah. kidding? Like, all right, dog. Like, it's, you, you, got you got it. me. Yeah. You got me you at that point. Cap. You got me, dog. Executed and you did yeah. what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, talk to us about. Your, what's your favorite stadium to play in, and then what's your favorite city? And it's, it, even if it, it's the difference. Yeah. Uh, favorite stadium that I've played in. Every, every time somebody asks this question, it always goes off like, how you play? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Word. Yeah. Uh, but Wrigley. Mm. Wrigley Field probably. Okay. be jumping. Dude. I mean, and I pitched there on Labor Day in 2019. Oh. Yeah, Labor Day Monday, place was dump day game, um, and I threw the ball pretty well. That was that was sick. Um, I had to go Wrigley one, and then best city I probably had to say. Yeah. Mm, I probably had to say New York, either New York or. Yeah, probably New York. Probably New York. Why New York? Because there's just everything you can everything, do. Everything, yeah, do yeah. Anything you want to. Yeah, you get York. to roam around the city, you know, eat a good dinner, things like that. I'm about to say, like, do you like, get to experience, like, the actual, like, I'm going to say clubbing, bars type stuff, you know? Yeah. It's like four or five game series and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. You got, you know, you still got your... Couple single dudes up up there. I, said, I heard a lot of people married. A lot of dudes married. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of dudes is married, especially nowadays, man. A lot of the young cats, like before they even get to the big leagues, like they're already married yeah. and sure. damn near got kids. But you know, yeah, yeah, that's that's uh that's them. But then you got a couple dudes that are single that still wanna you know pop out and see what the city's like. So you, yeah, <laughs> a little bit, <laughs> a little bit, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I feel it. But that, nah, no, what's crazy to think about? We was talking about it. If you would have came to Vandy, <laughs> even you, your brother, Cal Wright, Tukey, Tukey Toussaint, McKenzie, McKenzie would have been a year later. Yep, Tris McKenzie, Tris McKenzie, Bueller, Fulmer, Pfeiffer, Cease. Pfeiffer, Dylan Cease, Dylan Cease. like. All on one team, dog. Hold on, Dylan Cease with uh, the, he was white, the Sox. white Sox. With the white he, was, Sox. He, was, he was he was committed, man. Oof. I'm like, yeah. they don't understand, like, bro, like, like it's ridiculous, man. Yikes. It would have been, yeah, yikes. Like when I think that 14 year, I think Bueller was a Tuesday guy. Least yeah, least. he was for a little bit. You no, know, he was Tuesday the whole year until the until, until the playoffs. The SEC tournament he's like, uh, he was probably like our uh, Mason. Yeah, 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 I'm saying like Bueller on a Tuesday, dog. That's crazy, bro. You feel me? Yeah, that's crazy. Back to back to back to oh, back. Yeah. It'll be <laughs> I'm over. saying, man. It'll that's, been that's, over. That's, bro, that's like our rotation in 15 was former Pfeiffer Bueller. Or I, former I, I, Bueller I didn't say Pfeiffer. Beatty in 14. Beatty was also there in 14. Yeah. Like, I'm just, cause. Man. That's, that's a lot of arms. That's, bro. that's a ton of arms. That's a lot of arms. That's a ton of arms. I've been. An exciting Good call. luck, Brownie. It would have been lit. <laughs> Not for the hitters. <laughs> the hitters, what? Not for the hitters. What? Yeah, man. Hey, Trying to play somebody hey, else, man. Hey, right here. Hey. It would have been lit, man. Yeah, that was the hardest. That was one of the hardest things I had to do was uh, contact Corbin and tell him I wasn't coming I'm to school. I might say, what was that call? Like, I know you was nervous, sweating. Well, he didn't ask me at first. Mm. <laughs> See, what he was saying think, think again Think again, <laughs> think again. Doing this. Then call me back Oh <laughs> uh, man uh, Nah I think what it was Y'all was going through the. It was during Omaha So obviously he was busy mm, Okay yeah um, But Corbin 
dude, one of the greatest humans I've ever met in my life. He, you know, I didn't go to school there. I turned turned it down. Um, you know, and he told me that at first he was only going to give me a certain percentage of a scholarship. Well, Jordan was going on full ride because he had the financial aid with it. Mm-hmm. Well, the way it works was you can't do financial aid for but for only one family member. Mm. So I couldn't get that same mm-hmm. ordeal. So in my head, I'm like, well, dang, I ain't, I ain't trying to be the one to make my family have to pay yeah. for me to go to school. Like, mm-hmm. and then Corbs called back and said, hey, we did, you know, we made an adjustment. <laughs> like, you <laughs> coming. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Hey, that boy found him a yeah. loophole. Yeah. And, he but, found him a loophole. So, you know, I know he did a lot from even right there, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, just a personal decision just to go to pro ball that was tough man because that was you know that was my that was my dude and that was my school and that's where I wanted to go and your brother did too. and my brother was there you know that had a lot of a lot of pull to go but one thing about Corbin after I got drafted my rookie year came back home got into a little uh got into a little trouble being stupid whatever um Corbin didn't have to do this reached out to me out of, out of nowhere, reached okay. out to me, called me. He said, um, are you going to be in town this week? Are you going to be in Tullahoma? And I was like, yeah. He was like, meet me in my office at a certain time um, on this day. And I said, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> sure. yes, you got to tell I'm me that now. I pulled up to the to to the um, field. Uh, y'all was practicing, and it was when uh, Chris Heron had come out and, and, and spoke to us. And uh, – yeah. He was sitting in Corb's office, him and Maggie and and and, and Chris, and Corb just sat me down in his office and we just chopped it up, me and him, for dude, probably about an hour and a half, and then uh, we walked over to the, um, I guess the ath- the student center yeah. where all the athletes met Magoogan. up with Magoogan. Yeah. yeah, 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 and uh, you know he did his uh, thing there too, but that dude had no reason to even hit me up, you know, or anything. But the fact that he cared that much and, you know, he even said in the meeting, he was like, you didn't come to school here. He's, uh, he told me, he's like, you didn't come to school here, but your brother's here and we got a connection. So you're a part of this family just as much as he is. Yeah, um, so like for him to do that, that was crazy. So I have nothing but respect for that man. No, nah, he a real one. I know when you got drafted. I was like, take it. <laughs> I'm like, go. <laughs> no, no. But no, that's real, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, brother, we appreciate you for stopping by and messing with us, man. Oh, yeah. On the podcast. Appreciate that, for real. That's love. Uh, no, for sure. Always. Anything love, for my boys, love, love. man. Hey, follow that on man on Instagram. Follow him. Justice Sheffield. Jay Chef. Yep. Like, comment, subscribe. You know. Follow the page. It's always the 2%. 2%. Let us know who you guys want on the podcast. We'll do our best to get them on. And Chef, you got any boys want to come on? Don't matter if they ain't going to go to college or not, come on to the podcast. We'll chop it up for sure. For sure. I got you. All right, man. We out of here. We'll see you. Peace.